to Tech on Purpose's Who's in Your Cloud blog series, where we cover the 21 steps to secure, reliable, and trusted technology. Thanks for joining us for episode 17, Manage Detection and Response, or MDR. I'm Lauren Lebb, Marketing Manager for Tech on Purpose and the always sassy and sometimes savvy host of this vlog series. <laughs> Catch up on all of our previous episodes on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Spotify. And you can sign up for our free cybersecurity risk assessment at whosinyour.cloud. MDR, let's dive into it. So like I said, MDR stands for Managed Detection and Response. It is a cybersecurity service that combines technology with human expertise to do the threat hunting monitoring and responding to malicious activity in your business so that you can focus on what's actually important. So another great benefit of MDR is that it helps rapidly identify and limit the impact of threats without the need for additional staffing. Clearly you shouldn't just take my word for it. So that's why I brought in this good looking cast of savvy cybersecurity specialist. So let's meet my experts. Joining us for the first time on the vlog is Jamal Purvis, Solutions Engineer from Intellisys. We've had Intellisys on the vlog a couple of times. Jamal is new to us. So introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about what you do at Intellisys. Absolutely. And thank you, Lauren. Um, so my name is Jamal Purvis, and I am a Solutions Engineer for Intellisys. And um, just kind of give you a little background about me. I, I started in the kind of the physical security and networking environment. And one of the things that I was able to do was to learn a lot about security. And it led me from the physical side over into the cyber side. Uh, so for the last year and a half or so, I've actually been really studying up on and getting to know more and more about cybersecurity. And let's just be honest, you can never ever be an expert. Uh, you could definitely be a specialist and you could definitely know your field real well, but to call yourself an expert is kind of tough because you're always learning. And frankly, uh, my head hurts with so many acronyms <laughs> in this, you know, cybersecurity environment. So, Mine too. <laughs> so I, I definitely get what you're saying. And um, so for, for my role, just really quick, you know, I, I definitely help with all of our partners to try to find the right supplier that's going to meet their needs. And especially in the cybersecurity world, and we're talking about MDR today. So uh, I'm pretty sure it, it's going to be very interesting conversation as we go through it. We've recently introduced Privify to the blog. Joining us today is Principal Systems Architect and Field Engineer, DJ Joaquim Pali. How do I say it? Joaquim Pali. Joaquim Pali. Hey, I almost did it. I told you it's going to make me better. <laughs> there goes your hard coffee. Hard DJ. Hard coffee's out. <laughs> All right. Tell us who you are and what you do at Privify. So at Privify, I am responsible for a, a couple of things. Uh, one is I'm responsible for actually doing um, uh, designs for field deployment of our solution, uh, which is uh, provided as a, a software as a service. Uh, and sometimes we also provide software, uh, security software as a service or security as a service. So we provide two categories of products. And I do the planning uh, and I do the sizing and then I help with the deployment. So from the time uh, sale is done until the time it's realized in the network, that's where I come in. Uh, my second hat is also providing uh, the much needed input for our development team to come up with the right uh, strategy for our to meet the market. For We primarily focus on uh, small and medium businesses uh, and that's our target audience right now because we feel that that's an underserved market. So that's where we focus our energies on. And lastly, we have a new top Cyber 21 solution partner joining the blog today. Um, we have VP of Service Providers, Brian Stoner from Stellar Cyber. Brian, tell us a little bit more about who you are, who Stellar Cyber is, and what you do for them. Sure, Lauren, and thanks so much for having us again. This is really a, a, a great treat, right? So um, I'm Brian Stoner. I manage um, over 110 service providers globally that leverage the Stellar Cyber OpenXDR platform to run their SOC operations. And so um, I've been in the cybersecurity business for about 20 years. I've worked for companies like McAfee and 
FireEye and Silence. And I actually helped uh, Solutionary sell their business to NTT uh, back in the day. So a lot of experience in the service provider space. Um, prior to that, I was in the carrier and hosting space for about 13 years. So I've uh, been doing this for a long time and excited to share with the group. Brian started the industry when he was 29. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Welcome, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. And last but never least, we have Matt Tankersley, Cyber Evangelist and Tech on Purposes founder and CEO. Matt, welcome again. Such a pleasure to, to uh, work in this program with you and all of our many uh, fabulous partners like the folks represented here today. And so I definitely want to say thanks to each of you guys for and your organization for all you do to equip us Tech on Purpose and our global customer family with the many products, services, and solutions that are frankly purpose built to deliver our secure, reliable, and trusted technology that we tell all the time. So let's talk about MDR or EDR or XDR. What do we call it this week? Right? <laughs> it's kind of kind of like those family photos where you have three generations and one photo. I think that's really the origin of, of the of these terms. And each one has built upon the other to improve. And there's no question that mitigating monitoring and responding to evolving cyber risks involves lots of different layers right guys i i personally find it really intriguing that we continue to see a convergence of different technologies that seems to help us maybe minimize the number of unique vendors that are needed to achieve our top 21 uh security steps right so probably in, in, in on that front none more than mdr xdr uh, and the solution prior providers that we've had the privilege of meeting in, in recent months even. So uh, what's the role of XDR or MDR and how does that complement or contrast with the other cyber best practices like endpoint security and SIM, right? We haven't talked much about SIM yet. Uh, and in my mind, SIM is a critical part of MDR, XDR, right? Or maybe it's not MDR, but it's XDR. Maybe that's one of the differentiators. I'm still learning too, right? But I trust today, with the help of our cyber expert, Cass Lauren, we're going to uncover the role, the differences, and the vital necessity for these technologies and the risk mitigation and response strategies for our audience. So, Lauren, let's cast off and uh, let's see what we can learn today from this fabulous cast of cyber characters. Okay, so for our first roundtable topic, we're going to go around. Um, Jamal, I'm actually going to start with you. Tell us a little bit more about... MDR, what it is, why we should care, um, and then feel free to share any statistics, stories, anecdotes from your own personal experience. Right, the, the MDR, right, it stands for, of course, managed detection and response, and in some scenarios, remediation is another R that you could throw in there, right? right. Um, so for, for me, that definition, I always kind of like to break down the three main words. You know, what is the managed part? The managed part it is that network or managing the devices on the network or off the network. It could be devices that are remotely used. It could be devices that are internal. Um, so that's where that managed piece comes in. And that could be things like software updates. That could be, you know, checking, patching, things like that. Anything that you know that you need an IT department kind of for or as a supplement, that's where that managed piece comes in. Uh, the detection. What is the worst thing that you can possibly have happen to your company? And that is for you to get basically hacked or get ransomware. So the detection part comes in is to detect any suspicious or anything that kind of stands out that is not a normal task, right? Is detecting what's coming across that network. You know, if you know that John Smith goes to work from eight to five and he usually works from home, you know, three days a week, all of a sudden you start seeing some kind of uh, anomalies on Saturday or Sunday. That's a, that's a simple thing that's something can pop up a big red flag and say, hey, something's not right here. And from that point, you go into that response. What do you do when you see that red flag? So you take all that data you bring across and you easily kind of put it together and you start to decipher, did John just go in just because he had something due by Monday and he was you know, behind, or could it be someone else coming through John's login or his device that throws that big red flag up? So that's kind of the way I see it. And I know these other guys, they, they definitely can give you even better definitions of it because I know this team that we're on right now, you know, they've got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, 
more than I do. Um, but I will say this, one horror story, and this happened to a friend of mine who has his own business. And let's just say he did not have the right tools in place. One day he's on a trip and he goes down to Florida and he's uh, kind of on vacation and he leaves his laptop in his hotel room unattended, not logged out. So you could just imagine what happens next. Uh, fortunately, he was able to kind of catch most of it, but the person that did go in, they actually got account numbers off of his laptop. They dived in some other things. So they actually pulled data that they thought they could use, but he's very meticulous on how he keeps certain things in there. So the customer base was done, but he did have issues uh, for a few months trying to get it set, situated with his bank account. So just think about that part. That is more of a physical thing, but it could have been a lot worse had he been connected to his server and logged in and all of a sudden that customer data is out there or better yet, all his potential clients mm -hmm. could have been known. So that's kind of like the horror story I look at from that point, but then there's others that I can definitely tell you, but we'll have to sign you to an NDA. <laughs> so, totally understand. Yeah, that's a, that's a scary scenario. Imagine if that, if that user had reset passwords, right? Yeah. I mean, they're logged true. in. Now they start resetting passwords. Now they're selling those passwords on the dark web. We've had that episode, right? We've talked about yeah. that. So, uh, you know, that's where those, uh, you know, one of those ways those anomalies can start to appear, you know, three days later when he's out in the middle of the ocean fishing, stuff starts happening, right? How do you know, how do you know that that's happening, right? That's the kind of stuff we're talking about today. Great Absolutely. intro, Jamal. Thanks. All right. Brian Stoner from Stellar Cyber works out perfectly. Brian yeah. Stoner, Stellar Cyber. What is your take on MDR? <laughs> Well, so kind of following up on what Jamal said, right? This is what we provide the technology for, for partners to do every day, right? And I, I think um, there's a few trends in the industry that we need to think about as, as we think about MDR, right? Managed detection and response never really had response for most partners, right? You know, we'll tell you that somebody stole your, you know, uh, identity, but we won't tell you who did it or when they did it or, you know, how you're going to fix it, right? And so um, that's where I think um, the industry kind of started to gravitate toward extended detection and response, which is what um, XDR stands for. But, you know, XDR now is being used in so many different ways. I think I saw it on the hand dryer in the bathroom at the gas station today when I filled up my car. You know, I mean, it is literally it's on endpoint products, it's on cloud products, it's, you know, it's everywhere right now. And I think what, what we really need to do is kind of educate people as to, you know, well, how can we really use that extended detection and response to really solve the problem of there's more and more threats, there's more and more things to look through. You know, SIM technologies were never really designed to deal with the volume of things that hit our businesses every day today. So we have to think, you know, how can we move from, you know, this very binary, oh, somebody failed to log in 10 times. Uh, I'm going to alert on that. Okay, great. Well, then what do you do about it? Well, there are these new tools called security orchestration and response tools, right, that, that kind of sit next to the SIM, equally as complicated to set up and run, right? Um, so now you invest in the SIM and then invest in the SOAR and then provide this really manual expensive service or you to look for like a more integrated platform. So from an XDR perspective, the other reason that you're not seeing like a Gartner Magic Quadrant on XDR is because it means something different to everybody who slaps it on their product, right? If you talk to CrowdStrike or Sentinel-1, um, they bought big databases. CrowdStrike bought Humio and, and um, Sentinel-1 bought um, Scalar, right? Um, but those are just big databases, right? They, they're not ingesting data from everything in the network. They're not ingesting from, you know, the cloud services and all those other things yet. And so it's really just a way for them to kind of get out of the commodity business that they're already in, right? They're trying to do that. And then you've got the, the big players like Palo Alto and Fortinet where you have to buy this huge stack of expensive equipment just to get extended detection and response. 
So we took a little bit different approach and we created an open architecture where we'll integrate with anything. It doesn't matter. If it's a security product and it throws off a log, we'll ingest that, we'll normalize it and we'll make sense of it. And so now we're starting to use machine learning to automate things that the analyst has to do manually today in a SIM so that we can actually help our partners support more customers with fewer analysts because it's so hard to find them today. So we're, we're really trying to solve this problem in a, in a unique way um, by using machine learning. And there's you know, probably about seven different types that we use in the platform. But to Jamal's example, um, you know, for something like uh, somebody coming in at the middle of, in the middle of the night to log in and do some extra work, right? Um, we use this thing called unsupervised machine learning where we baseline what everyone does. Um, we'll know when Lauren logs in in the morning. We'll know when, when Matt logs off at night. We'll know how much data Matt normally transfers in a day. We'll know um, where he normally logs in from. And if he logs in from someplace else, right, we can alert on it. It's not necessarily a bad thing that Matt's on vacation finally, but you know, we, we have to know that that's what's really happening, right? Um, to Jamal's example. So I think there's some unique ways that we can start to use this new technology to eliminate a lot of the manual work and then and then automate the detection so we can reduce that window. I think it's still like 200 plus days to detect things um, on average, right? And then to respond to it can take even longer. Um, we want to reduce that to seconds, not weeks and months. If you guys aren't familiar with Privify, uh, they're doing a lot more than this and then they're doing something different than this. And they, you know they're approaching the security stack from a different way. It's really unique uh, to me. I'm anxious to hear what you say about that uh, as well, DJ. I, I also want to say, say for our viewing audience, one of the things that intrigued me the most when we started building our cyber portfolio, right, is when we came across the SIM technology. And we, I think it's really important to note that I think that the proper XDR or MDR technologies are, are, are incorporating SIM into what they're doing, right? And I think as Brian said, it's like, okay, We've got all this data and we're collecting it. Now, what do we do with it, right? I think that's where the, this machine learning and the AI and the manned cyber security operations centers come into play. So for our viewing audience, right? You probably are out there running your barbecue chains and your accounting firms, and you got better things to do than think about IT in general, much less cyber risk. So you're taking a few proactive things here and there, and I hope that you know your endpoint security is doing what it's supposed to do. But how do you know before it's too late, right? I think that's where these XDR solutions come in. And what I love about uh, the SIM piece that I think is imperative to the XDR piece with it layered on top of it is that we're looking at every packet that goes in and out of your machine. We're looking at every security event that goes in and out of those machines. We're looking at the ingress and egress traffic of your every site that you have. We're looking at your cloud tools, your Microsoft 365 and your Google, and we're looking at your, you know, your, uh, um, uh, what's the one I'm missing there that's important? Salesforce, I, Meraki, Fortinet, SAS, whatever it is. SaaS applications, yeah. Yeah, SaaS applications. So we're looking at all those security events. And so the, as Brian and Jamal both said, they've got this intelligent platform that's correlating all of that data, not just in one place. I'm correlating all the data for all of the users from all of the tools that they use to bring this intelligence layer to the aspect. So if, if you were still out there confused about what this thing's going to do for you, that's it. It's imperative that we just monitor. And now what do we do with that data? And that's where our XDR solution partners come in. So DJ, you have the floor, man. Let's hear about Privify and uh, and your take sure. on this whole so, VR thing. Yeah. Absolutely. So in Privify, what we attempted to do was uh, to limit the number of, first of all, we wanted to take a look at how many small and medium businesses are out there in the world and in America, especially, and how, uh, providing a managed uh, security as a service solution has to look and feel like. The small and medium businesses, uh, there is one to 499 um, user number as of 2013 was something like 5.7 million in America alone. And out of that 5.7 million, 5.1 million of those enterprises had one to 10 users per business. When you shrink it down to that level, none of the Palo Altos and the big guys will actually scale down to that level because they're all uh, still doing the thousand, two thousand, the big numbers. Because 
when you're collecting data for an enterprise that has multi-site and stuff like that, the amount of data is so much that you have to, like uh, Brian said, you have to have a massive ass box to actually just do the munging and crunching the numbers. So when you scale it down to this little um, one to 19 or one to 20 or one to 500 people, the, the problem is very different in two ways. One is the scale of the problem is different. And the second problem is how do you take it to market? Because the, the mindset of the people, are, unless they had an experience, it's going to be very difficult to get them excited about protecting their environment in a, in a highly threatening world as, we, as it exists today. Right. Um, so if you really recently looked at the news, Costa Rica had to shut down the government because they had a ransomware attack that took down the whole government. Wow. wow. And now well, they are actually going soon. to, uh, the, you know, the, the US government has offered $10 million for any information that leads up to finding out who did it. Wow. And we all know who did it. It was apparently Conti out of Russia that did it, but they still have to know the exact individuals that were involved in it so we can go after them or whatever it is. But see that now that tells you how the threat that used to come in the form of viruses that, were, that was affecting everybody's laptop and desktop and stuff like that, which actually didn't make any monetary or any political um, uh, sense to something that is being used as a weapon against individuals, companies, wow. and governments to further somebody's motivation. So when you match that to a small and medium businesses, we have a, a unique perspective as to how we need to do something and what is the scale of uh, that something that we need to do in order to make MDR, XDR, EDR palatable and marketable to this market. That's where Priofy is right now. I'd love to get offline with you, DJ, and talk to you more about our Top Cyber 21 stack because what I love about what you guys are doing that's unique is you're approaching, you're not just dealing with SIM. You're not just dealing with XDR and NDR and EDR. There's more to it than that. And yes. I love, above, above all, I love that you've been able to uh, uh, make that agnostic to the sense that you don't care about the device and the operating system, right? You, you got Mac, you got Windows, you got Linux, you got iOS, you got Android, and it's simple. Uh, and that's a beautiful piece of that. And you guys, I'm just saying that goes beyond the, the focus conversation on NDR and XDR, they're doing a lot more. I love that unification of solutions set that they're providing. Brian Stoner from Stellar Cyber. Let's yes. talk about solutions. Um, what MDR solutions do you guys implement there? Well, so we provide a platform that service providers use to provide their MDR service, right? And, and so it's, it's a whole stack that's been kind of purpose built for the service providers. So your viewers would probably be the end, you know, uh, customers of, of our service providers. And we're 100% channel, so that's kind of a core tenant for us. But um, at the end of the day, what we've done is we've taken, um, you know, what, what used to take a lot of people and manpower to manage, and we've, we've automated it. So the whole Stellar Cyber platform includes a SIM. It includes 12 different um, sources of threat intelligence. It includes a network detection piece. Uh, we have API connectors to hundreds of different EDR tools and you know, mail services and all those sorts of things so that uh, we can get 360 degree vi visibility into what's happening. But as we're ingesting that data, we compare it against the dozen different sources of threat intelligence. So we can ascertain really quickly if something's good or bad and even if it's like, if you're familiar with the terminology, a zero day, right? Um, we have a sandbox that'll in the platform as well that'll detonate it and give it a reputation before we store that data in the data lake. And then once that data is in the data lake, we do our machine learning detections and we can actually create incidents like related alerts into a full incident in real time. And you know, up until now, that would take you know, an uh, incident response firm weeks to dig through the red tape and figure out exactly what happened, we've automated that. And then we also kind of automated the response. So not only can we detect it faster, but 
even in a small business, you know, two or three people, maybe we see that, you know, ransomware is about to hit one of their machines. If, uh, if we see that, um, we can create playbooks where we can automatically block the ransomware from loading um, before it impacts your customer, right? So what we're trying to do is really change that experience. We're trying to, you know, reduce that dwell time for them in your network, because unfortunately, what, what DJ was talking about where, you know, we figure out that it's Russia that did it, or I think you've even seen some articles recently where the federal government has tracked the Bitcoin transaction back to the attackers and actually prosecuted some people, Interesting. which is really cool, right? Um, but I don't think we're going to be prosecuting Russia anytime soon. No. So it's, it's probably better <laughs> to have a, a proactive solution through your service provider that's going to help them detect these things faster so that you don't wind up in that situation. What Stellar does is equip companies like ours with the ability to bring mm -hmm. these solutions in scale to our clients of any size. And so we love that. I'll tell you, Brian, I think it was your technology, and I've seen it in a few, and you sort of implied it, but I want to say that for that listening audience, all right? Let's say that you do have a compromised device or an endpoint. If I'm not mistaken, Brian, you guys have a way to basically isolate that device in such a way so that it can't spread. And in fact, you still maintain remote connectivity to remediate the device while you have actually isolated it. That's, that's pretty awesome stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, then, no, uh, we, we have a lot of great capabilities. And, um, you know, I, I think the important thing is to kind of bring it back to the goal, right? The goal is to reduce the, the opportunity for those attackers to damage any size customer. You know, I'll tell you, we need to we need to move the ball along because we're running out of time. We want to let everybody get on to their Friday afternoon. I will share a little fun fact. I was at a the Houston cybersecurity conference, I think, week before last. And uh, I had the uh, privilege of having dinner with two secret service agents who are tasked with cybersecurity response. And I didn't realize this, but they've got a, a group of over 300 plus people. That's all they do is cybersecurity stuff. And in particular, I guess they're associated with the uh, treasury department. They're under the treasury department. And if it's finance related, which so much of ransomware stuff is, these are the guys that are on point. And apparently they have offices in over 50 nations globally. So I think the good news takeaway for that, for those who are listening, is these guys are actually very accessible. We talked about accessibility. Mm -hmm. If you have an event, you can report to these guys and they will get involved at some point or another in helping resolve, track down the issues. Jamal, what are your thoughts? We haven't heard from you in a second. So <laughs> where's yours? So, you know, we have a different take because, you know, we are that uh, technology solution distributor, right? Um, so in that scenario, I will probably say, you know, we, we have partnerships with tons of suppliers that can do everything that Brian just mentioned, um, or maybe even a Brian himself, right? We can have, you know, DJ here as well. Um, the, the, the key is, I think that a lot of people don't know is sometimes you gotta go backwards a little bit and talk about education. And, and user education for me is like one thing that I'm like in my top three. When I talk cybersecurity, user education is probably one of the biggest thing that I will pull up. And, you know, cyber awareness training, you know, just teaching people about when they're using their endpoint that's being managed, right? Not to click on something that could potentially, you know, do something to your potential employer, right? Or your, your customer base, if you're in that scenario. Um, and, and that's something that I always kind of stand out. And, and that's a big part of, uh, of something that I would say is a part of that MDR, even though it's not necessarily in the solution stack, it is a big picture, right? Um, and we want to kind of draw people to a, a bigger picture just beyond what we're talking about today. Just want to just throw that little nugget out there just so people can have. Um, and, and then of course, the other piece that I always kind of throw into um, and this kind of revolves around the endpoints as well and some of the networking. It's the physical security environment that you're in, right? We talked about my buddy who was down the hotel. It, it's, it's, he's on the lock and key based off of the hotel's lock and key system. Anybody can get a key. I can make a copy of a key in 25 seconds with a couple of devices I have in my, in my house right now. Um, however, I won't do that. Um, but in the event that you are in your building in your corporate office and you're still using an old traditional lock and key, you, my friend, are 
potentially putting yourself in a big, big issue. Um, so think about it as, and I don't mean just the front door, I mean like your network closet, I mean things like that. So having those things blocked and protected by access control systems, that's big because it's protecting another endpoint in your office. It's protecting another device in your office, the server, switches, routers, you know, probably even your security station. Um, I've had people have issues from that, you know, just because they didn't lock it down correctly. Um, so I, I know I'm a little off topic, but I did want to just bring that up because I think it's just another piece that some people forget about and it's something that we can always discuss further. People just get too relaxed for two seconds. Um, I was working somewhere and you just mentioned like the closet, the closet with all their IT, all their supplies, everything, and they had it locked, but then they always kept the key to the lock in the thing. And so I took it out and I put it away in the register and then I got in trouble. I was like, why are we going to have a locked door? <laughs> well, we create the key to the lock and the door. It just didn't make sense to me. And like you said, it goes all, always goes back to education. Yes. Always. You know, Jamal, you said education. And that's what this whole program is about. It's what our top cyber 21 is all about. Hopefully our viewing audiences are learning from this process. And there's no question. Sure. And I think if I could briefly, and let's get DJ some thoughts in there, right? If I could briefly connect the dots between physical security and, and MDR and XDR, right? If you think about it today, the key that Lauren discussed, there's no auditing. There's no record of who touched that key when and who stuck it in and who turned it, right? Yep. If you're yep. using some more modern common technology that are access control platforms, guess what? Those access control platforms are going to be programmed to dump their sys logs and event logs up into what the sim and the xdr so that now we've had a physical incident we can go trace and see where that person came in the front door the back door the side door and then into the it closet uh, we've yeah. got everything we need to correlate that data but yeah good stuff man good stuff uh and we're on our last round right and we need to give dj yeah. some, some time here right so dj talk to us a little bit more about the specific solutions that privatify as to uh, combat uh, or deliver a solution for MDR and XDR to your partners? We actually approached it just like Brian was mentioning. Um, we collect um, floor level information on every flow that comes in and out. We provide the protection from all known threats from day one and we track them. And uh, like uh, Brian was saying that we normally will uh, track individual users' uh, normal behavior and then we can, so that we can actually do a normal detection as well. So those are like standard things that one has to do because we are not on every device. We don't collect uh, logs from every switch in an environment. We don't do any of that stuff. We do, uh, however, planning on looking at endpoint uh, because endpoint is a very interesting play because endpoint people rely on antivirus software as the endpoint story, which is not really going to solve the problems of today. It solved the problems of yesterday and people have created a, a sense of security with it. But if we really look at all the endpoint protection that are available today, they're all trying to go into the different areas. ID protection, they say, we are gonna give you ID protection. They're gonna give you VPN service and stuff like that. So they're actually trying to expand their capabilities in order to encompass more and more of what is relevant today. And so what we are looking at is what is the best pieces of information that's available that can easily identify and recognize and we will be able to remediate, like Brian was saying, come ahead of an attack as opposed to after the fact and try to figure out what happened. So that's the two areas that we are very focused on. And um, like Brian was saying, we do everything from um, machine learning to understand what is happening in the environment, what the users are doing in an environment. Our biggest uh, challenge is, you know, all these uh, technology words make sense to, let's say, a gardener analyst or some of us who are in that environment. I go to a doctor's office, which has 50 doctors, with two managers that are running five locations, it's almost impossible to tell them you need MDR because they don't even know what it is. So education, like Jamal was saying, is absolutely crucial 
and making it palatable to that kind of an audience is even more important. So exactly. the, losing some of the technology words and then converting it to like a normal, normal people word, like Lauren was saying earlier, that people yes. will understand. <laughs> That's very, very important. <laughs> Bring it exactly. Down to <laughs> I'm our target audience, end user to the T. <laughs> so if I can understand it, you can understand it. That's right. Well, Lauren, I know, I know you, you, if you're watching, you've been through our episode. This is episode 17, right? We already talked about secure remote access and we already talked about endpoint uh, security. And we already talked about security awareness training and all these things. And, one of the things I love, uh, in fact, have we done uh, mobile device management yet? Or we did, yeah, didn't we? It's the beginning. Yeah. So one of the things I love about the private fly platform is, uh, is the way they bring secure remote access into the conversation, right? Uh, so it's not just what we're talking about today. They, they, they really bring a lot of things together. Uh, Brian and, and Jamal, thanks so much for joining us. You know, Brian, you guys are a new uh, partner in our portfolio, and we're pretty ecstatic to continue to plug you guys in and learn more about what you're doing. We feel mm -hmm. like it's probably uh, a very superior to some of the legacy technologies that we've used. And so we're definitely looking in the marketplace. And for those that are listening, for those that are our customers, we never stop learning and we never stop looking for ways to improve your security. Uh, and, in, in, you know, what's crazy, sometimes we can reduce cost. We can make things better and we can do it for less. And, you know, I think that, Brian, your company could be one of those that helps us to do that. Uh, and I think, DJ, you guys are potentially already doing that for us. And we couldn't do any of it without great folks like Jamal and his peer, Patrick, that you've seen in other episodes, and Ivan Painter. And we're so grateful for each of our master agents. And so, Lauren, how about we get any final thoughts anybody has, and we'll let you close this out because we're already a minute past happy hour for some folks. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So like Matt said, before I close this out, Jamal, Brian, DJ, anything else to add? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, this is my first episode. It was really enjoyable. Nice meeting you, Brian, Jamal, and Matt, and of course, Lauren. I think I've seen a lot of your emails. Uh, <laughs> I was away. I'll bombard you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you all in person. Thank you very much for having yeah, likewise. me. Yeah, likewise. I'll second that. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I, I'm going to leave one, one story because Jamal triggered something with me. Um, a lot of people think that attacks only come through your email watch your text messages okay. yeah. yes. i i got a text a couple of years ago when i was at another startup said it was from the ceo requesting me to get 500 dollars in steam gift cards and that i needed to deliver to him right away and i actually made it to walgreens before i was like <laughs> Wait a minute! <laughs> what am I doing? Why you doing that? You know, yeah. so um, you know, just like your email, don't click on anything if you don't know where it's from. Don't click on anything in your texts yeah. anymore unless you know where it's from. Yeah, you so, know, we learn we learn in security awareness training the role that social engineering plays, and so the bad guys are out there and they know where you think and they know where you shop, and they'll they'll sit they'll, they're sending these SMSs now. It looks like it's coming from your bank. Mm -hmm. Guys, I gotta tell you. Exactly. Crazy world out there. You need top cyber 21 best security practices. Exactly. <laughs> Lauren, tell us how we get some of that. That is a wrap for us today. Thank you for joining us for episode 17 of our Who's in Your Cloud blog series, where we're covering the 21 steps to secure, reliable, trusted technology. If you want more of these episodes, which clearly you should, check out all of them on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify or get them delivered straight to your inbox by signing up at techonpurpose.net slash blog. To start a free trial from any of our solution partners here today, send an email to free trial at whosinyour.cloud and sign up for our free cybersecurity risk assessment at, once again, whosinyour.cloud. Next week, we're switching gears to network vulnerability and penetration testing. See, I'm already getting my acronyms, getting flowing, getting ready to go. Learn how security experts are able to simulate a cyber attack to identify the weak spots, leaving you vulnerable to cyber attack and what you can do to fix them. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Be safe out there. Bye, everyone.